we've been um, exploring the yamas, um, which is the first limb or path of the Eightfold Path of Yoga. And they have to do um, about general principles of how we relate to the world. And today, I want to discuss and do a practice about um, brahmacharya, which is the fourth yama. And I'd like to just start by reading the Yoga Sutra. Um, so I find there's nothing better than just going back to the source of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And pardon my Sanskrit, but <laughs> Yoga Sutra 2.38 reads, Brahmacharya Pratishthayam Virya Labaha. And BKS Iyengar's translation of this sutra is, when the sataka, which means um, yoga yogi practitioner, um, is firmly established in continence, knowledge, vigor, valor, and energy flow to him. So, this sutra um, is often known as, is often translated as celibacy, and it often gets misunderstood. Um, I like to think of it more as the um, conservation of energy, but it does have to do with sexual energy, since this is sort of the root of our life force energy. It's where, um, how we came to be in this world. And it's good, and the sutra is all about um, contemplating that energy. So on one hand, um, if we don't con uh, control that energy correctly, it can lead to um, two ends of a spectrum. It can lead to suppression of that energy, which can lead to abuse and things like that, or it can lead to addiction of uh, sexual addiction and um, so in the yoga world we want to use this energy um, and from being like turn from being outward and using that energy externally to bringing it um, inward so yoga is about you know control of the senses um, identifying and letting go of desires and attachment just the allure of the senses and then using bringing the energy inward and directing it towards that inner experience of being connected to all that is. And when we can do that, we, the sutra says that we can find um, valor and energy um, and vitality. So, so it is about the con conservation of energy. So I, this, pra this asana practice, um, I sort of modeled it around focusing on ba the balance between the root chakra and the crown chakra. And I also invite you to um, pay attention to your energy throughout this practice. And if you feel like you're giving too much or you're wasting energy or, you know, back it up a little bit and do some modifications and be, be kind to yourself. So I think that's all I wanna say about brahmacharya. I, we could go on and on. This is such a huge discussion um, that could happen. <laughs> Um, but let's just get started with our, with our movement practice. Okay. So we're going to start with a little pranayama or breathing exercise. So find yourself centered on your mat and begin to breathe normally. Good. And then turn your palms upwards. And on your inhale, you're going to lift your palms up like you're moving the prana up. Your energy up to the crown and exhale, move your prana or energy down to your root. We'll do a few breaths like that. Inhale. Exhale. And 
then bring your palms to heart center. And we'll do the same breathing, but we're going to bring the palms out and expand your chest. And exhale back to Namaste. A few breaths just like that. You can even start to move your body a little bit. Expanding on the inhale and on the exhale, rounding slightly. Good. And bring your palms back to heart center. And we'll do Hakini Mudra next. So tent your fingers, bring all your fingertips together, palms apart. Center your energy in the middle of your chest. And then we'll bring our hands up overhead. Focus your intention on what is beyond me. And we'll bring the hands down, fingers pointing down, right next to our pelvis. And bring your attention to the physical realm. So really connecting the physical realm, the earth, to the spiritual realm and what lies beyond. And then bring your hands back to heart center and back to namaste. Good. Okay, we're going to start warming up the body a little bit. So bring your hands to your thighs. We're going to start with some circles. We're going to do a lot of moving today with the breath. So inhale, sort of arching your back. Exhale, tucking your tail and rounding. So you can start with small circles and move bigger. Just really feel feel it out like what feels good inhaling forward exhaling back okay switch directions And find your center. And let's switch the cross of your legs. And then we'll bring the hands to Namaste on front, I mean, on right on top of the head. And we'll do smaller circles, similar, just a little smaller. See if you can feel that movement all the way from your pelvis, or the perineal body, up to your head. And then the other way. So just flow with what feels good. Kind of feel kind of meditative, natural. Good. And let their palms down to your thighs. Take a breath. <sighs> Okay, go ahead and lay on your back. Just bend your knees up, bring your arms out to the side, and gently rock your knees side to side. Maybe getting a little bit bigger, feeling your Lower core start to engage. Get that nice twist in your spine. And breathe. Okay, and then place your feet down on the floor, knees up. And we'll move in some to some pelvic tilts. So arch your back, bring your um, abdomen up, 
and then exhale, tuck your tailbone under as your low back presses into the floor. Okay, move with your breath. Inhale forward, exhale back. It's a very small movement. Just enjoy that small movement as we bring some energy into your pelvis and low back. It's okay to just let your abdomen and pelvic floor relax. Good, and come back to center. And then we're just gonna hike the pelvis to side to side. It's like you're trying to bring your right side pelvis up to your armpit and then your left pelvis to your left armpit. Just side to side. Exploring side bending. Good, and then widen your feet to the edges of your mat for windshield wipers. So let your knees fall to the right and then let your left leg up and over and then follow with your right. So you're kind of coming through a wide footed butterfly in the center. One more. Okay, and then we're gonna hug your knees in and start to rock and roll on the spine. Back and forth, just feeling every vertebrae roll on the floor. Notice if there's a vertebrae that doesn't wanna roll or feels a little achy, and then come all the way up back to sit. Okay, we're gonna do some more seated spine movements. So bring your hands to your knees in cross-legged position, and we'll inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, round. Really arching your whole back, sticking your tailbone out, and then tucking your tailbone under. So getting that movement all the way from your tailbone to the top of your head. Good, and back to center. And we'll do some side bending. So place your hand on the floor, reach your left arm up and over on your exhale, inhale to center, and exhale to the left. Try to keep your sternum facing forward. And back to center. Take a breath. And then we will twist. So exhale, twist to the right. Inhale to center, exhale to the left. Keep moving with your own breath. Once more each direction. Good, and back to center. Okay, bring your legs out in front of you. And if you tend to round your low back here, um, go ahead and sit on some height, get a blanket or a bolster. And we're gonna inhale the arms up and exhale forward. Good. Inhale up, arch your back, 
Oh, you know what? We're going to exhale and round. This is going to feel different. Okay, exhale, round. Yeah. Inhale up. Exhale, round. <sighs> Inhale up. Let's point your palms to the ceiling now. Exhale, round. And really draw your belly button back towards your spine. As you round and tuck your tail. Inhale up. Lifting your chest. Exhale, round. <sighs> It's okay to bend your knees, especially on that inhale if you have tight hamstrings. Let's do one more. Start to feel the fire building in your belly. Good. And release. And then widen your legs. And this is kind of like a stirring the soup motion. So you can clasp your hands and stir the soup. So you're rounding and tucking your tail and then arching a little bit as you come forward, sort of lifting your chest. And bring your focus to your pelvis. And then let's go the other way. Excellent. Okay. And release that. Place your hands on the inside of your knees to bring your legs back together. And we'll move into um, our cat cow. So find your quadruped. We'll inhale, arch your back, look up, exhale, round. Get your whole spine involved from the top of your head to your tailbone. And moving cat cow, so exhale as you come back to your heels. Inhale, pull forward. And we'll come all the way down onto your stomach. Take a breath here. Remembering to focus on your energy and doing what feels good that doesn't waste your energy, but builds it. Okay, moving cobra. Place your hands underneath your shoulders. Draw your shoulders down and back to open the chest. And we'll do 10 breaths here. So inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, down. Keep your neck in line with your spine so you don't crank it back. Reach your legs back strongly. Good. When you've done about 10, we'll come down and let's rest with your hands all the way out overhead and bring your palms and fingers together, thumbs wrap. Just bring your forehead down to the floor. Relax your legs. It's a nice position to feel your connection to the earth. back up and let's push back into your downward facing dog Adho Mukha Svanasana if you want to walk out your dog that's fine if you want to just hold it and 
Really reach your tailbone up. Good, and come down to all fours. Take a moment here. And then we'll move into our plank pose. Reach one leg back and then the other. And feel your power here. Feel the energy zip up through your arms to your center core and zip up through your legs. Straighten your legs. The tailbone tucks slightly down towards the heel so you're not arching your low back or collapsing in your back. For three, two, one. Good, and come down. Rest in wide knees, child's pose. And back to center, and we're going to do our side plank. So place your right hand on the floor. You might be here today, one leg down, or you can come into your full side plank. Maybe bringing that arm up. Three, two, one, and then come through center and go straight into the other side. Five more seconds. Good, and then you can come either into your down dog or child's pose if you need a rest. And then walk your feet to your hands. And just hang here in Uttanasana. We're going to move here with your breath. So into Ardha Uttanasana or half Uttanasana. So inhale, lift your chest, hands come to shins, exhale round. Let's do four more breaths like that. Inhale, exhale. Do one more. And exhale all the way down. On your next inhale, roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Take a deep breath. And stand in Tadasana. Excellent. Okay, let's do crescent moon series. So let's inhale your arms up and exhale to the right. Feel your feet rooting down into the ground and inhale up tall through center up to the sky and exhale to the left. And back to center, and then bring your hands to your low back as you lift your chest, open your chest, and then exhale, come all the way forward, Uttanasana. And if you'd like, you can bring your hands to the back of your calves, or I'm going to do a variation where I'm placing the backs of my hands on the floor under my feet. So palms of my hands go to the bottoms of my feet. It's okay to have a slight bend in your knees. Good, and then if your hands are under your feet, we'll release them. And let's come up with a flat back. So inhale, lift your chest, hands to hips, and come all the way up. And take a breath in Tadasana. 
Good. Okay, next is tree pose, or rikshasana. So you can do whatever variation is good for you. So let's turn out your right leg and see if you're sinking into that hip. If you are, really zip up through your left inner leg to keep the integrity so hips are, are balanced. And then you can bring your foot to your inner lower leg or your inner upper leg. Or you can do as I am doing and do a um, Ardha Padmasana here where your foot comes to the front of the thigh. You should feel a strong connection between both of your legs. Maybe raising your hands up for a couple breaths. Feel like a tree, like rooted down into the ground and reaching your branches way up high. And we'll release, shake it out. Okay, and then we'll turn the left leg out and kind of play with your pelvis here. Really draw up through your inner right thigh so you feel that suctioning of your outer right hip inward. Okay, and then you can press on your leg, not your knee, either above or below, or we can hold underneath to Padmasana or Lotus. When you're ready, you can bring your arms up. Rooting down and reaching tall. Good, and let go. Okay, we're gonna do goddess pose. So bring your feet out wide, so you turn out your feet. And we're going to come into a plie. <laughs> I'm a dancer, so I think of this as plie, but or you can think squat, knees over um, ankles, and pointing over your toes. And feel the strength of this pose, maybe bringing your palms up. Three more breaths here. Good, and coming up, pointing your toes forward and coming all the way down into our standing forward fold. Zip your kneecaps up, engage your legs, keep the life force in your legs. Let your head and neck relax down. Good, and then we'll come up, flat back. Leading with your chest and Tadasana. Feel your pelvis over your ankles and your shoulders over your pelvis. Your head back over your shoulders. Again, we're feeling that rooting down into the ground and then the connection up to the beyond. Okay, let's do moving chair to come down onto our backs. So we'll inhale, arch your back, exhale, round. Exploring your spine mobility here. From your tailbone to your head. Let's do one more inhale. And then on your next exhale, roll all the way down onto your back. 
And when you're ready, draw your right knee in towards your right shoulder. And if you have a strap, grab your strap. If you don't, that's okay. We're gonna straighten your right leg. So if you don't have a strap, just hold behind your thigh. If you have a strap, place it um, over your the arch of your foot, a little closer to your heel. And we'll give a nice stretch to their hamstrings, your calves. Really point your toes back towards your nose. Keep your leg active. And your left leg should be active too. Toes pointing up to the ceiling. Good, and then take your strap in one hand or just hold your leg and bring your right leg out to the side. Your left arm can come out to the side to counterbalance. Really feel that line from your inner right ankle bone to your inner right knee to your inner right groin. Feel that line lengthen. And feel the energy there. And then bring it out to the side. And again, feel that inner line from your inner left ankle to your inner knee to your inner groin. Lengthen and feel the energy running along that line. Good, and then we'll bring that leg back in and just hug both your knees to your chest. And then bring your knees up to the ceiling and hold your knees and do little circles to massage your low back out on the floor. Good, okay, we're gonna do a little bit of core work here. So bring your knees to 90-90, clasp your hands behind your head, and we're just gonna do some abdominal curls. So exhale, lift your chest up to the ceiling, inhale down. So instead of thinking about bringing your head to your legs, we're gonna lift your chest up to the ceiling. One more, and rest. And then raise both of your um, feet up to the ceiling, straighten your legs, and place your palms down alongside your pelvis, and see if you can lift your hips up off the floor. So it's like we're sort of tucking your tailbone, rounding your lumbar, and lifting up. You should feel the lower core muscles working. To lift up, up, up. And then if you want to add some twists, you can twist right and left and right and left. And I'm gonna do just five more in the center. and let it all go. <sighs> okay, we're gonna rock and roll a 
all the way up. Let's rock a few times. Good. And come all the way up to sit. Okay. So I've been working you up to a pose called Brahmacharyasana, since today's practice is called Brahmacharya. So we're almost there. We're going to do some moving table first to get warmed up into it. So place your feet on the ground, your hands back behind you a little bit, and move into your table pose. Your head come back, and then exhale, swing your hips between your hands. So we're going to do that a few times. Exhale, tuck your chin. Good. And release. Rest for a moment. Okay. So, Brahmacharyasana is where you have both your legs out in front of you, legs straight, and you lift up and lift your legs up off the floor. <laughs> now this is really difficult, so grab your blocks if you have them and place them right next to your pelvis. If you don't, that's okay too. You can practice this, these modifications. So you're going to just press up but keep your heels down and then practice lifting one leg and then the other leg. Maybe try that a couple of times. Keep your toes pointing up. Good. Rest. Okay. So if you'd like to give the full pose a try, please go for it. So you're going to press into your hands, lift your hips, and then lift your legs. Woo! That's not easy. <laughs> So I want to give you an extra, um, extra modification here. So if, grab your strap and you can try this without your strap. We're going to sit in cross-legged, put it underneath one knee, come over, around, make sure you get it underneath your foot, come crossing it underneath both feet. I know this is a little tricky, so it's okay if you don't get it. Maybe you can go back and watch it later to get it right. Otherwise, you can just stay cross-legged. But this really gives you a nice lock so that your feet don't come apart. And you can practice with your blocks. The higher, the better. The higher is easier. And lift up and that strap really like holds your holds your legs together. So you can try it with or without the strap. I'll let you try a couple times. Just having fun here with Brahmacharyasana. <laughs> Not a beginner level pose, but really wanted to throw it in there for um for the practice of Brahmacharya. I'm gonna take this out. You know, I wonder if even just practicing, like having your hands down and lifting your butt up, you can really feel that lower abdominal <sighs> engagement. Like that. It's good. Even if you're in a chair, press down on the chair, lift your butt up. Okay. <laughs> That's the fun part. Let's go into a nice relaxing pose offset that one. Let's bring your legs into butterfly, but bring your feet a little wider away from your pelvis. You might be here today, or you can lean forward and place your palms up underneath your shins. Find a comfortable position. Maybe your head comes down to your um, feet.
deep breaths. Good, and we'll walk back up. 14, okay. And let's, um, let's straighten the legs out in front. And we'll do Paschimottanasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward. If your back rounds in this pose, it can be nice to sit on some height to protect your back. Keep your legs active. Toes pointing back towards your face. and we'll come back up. <sighs> Let's do a little massage to those quads since those quads had to work pretty hard for Brahmacharyasana. So just do a little kneading like you're kneading dough. You can sit however feels comfortable. Get those thighs. Do a little with some soft fists. Just Hitting your thighs with love. Get the sides, get the tops, the inner thighs. And then just do some nice sweeps up, some lymph drainage kind of up towards the groin. Okay, we're going to do a uh, meditation here before Shavasana. So if you'd like to sit on some height or just find yourself a comfortable position. Okay. So this is the Kubera Mudra. Kubera is the deity of wealth. So bring your um, fists together and then just bring your forefinger and, in, and um, middle finger together to touch your thumbs like that and you can place them on your thighs. And just begin to breathe. This mudra is meant to direct awareness to your solar plexus. And your lower diaphragm. Just notice and bring your awareness there. Inhale, notice your vital life force energy centering in your solar plexus. And then exhale, feel that energy moving outward. Feeling a balance of energy inward and energy outward from our center. Part of Brahmacharya is noticing where we place our energy. We think of some things that come to mind that might drain your energy, whether that's in your daily routines or your work or in your relationship. And 
then come, bring to mind things that feed your energy, that feed your soul, that give you nourishment in these areas. Brahmacharya is about becoming aware where we place our energy and controlling that, of choosing to place our energy into the things that nourish us and bring us vitality. It takes practice. I made up a little mantra here. I consciously conserve and balance my energy Thus, I experience abundant vitality in my journey. I consciously conserve and balance my energy. Thus, I experience abundant vitality in my journey. One more breath. And bring your hands to Namaste. And we'll move into your Shavasana however feels comfortable to you. Just roll on down onto your back or onto the couch or somewhere comfortable. And just let everything relax into the floor. Bring your awareness back into your body. And just gently start to move your legs. And we'll bring your knees into your chest. Bring one arm overhead. And then roll to your side. Rest your head on your arm. And with your head and neck being the last thing to come up, press up, keeping it all relaxed, conserving your energy. 
come to your meditation pose. Take a breath here and notice that connection that we cultivated from your tailbone, perineal body, all the way up to the crown of your head. Feel the rooted down and the upward movement and connection. bring our hands into namaste at our sternum. Namaste. So you've made it through nonviolence, being in truth, um, not stealing. And brahmacharya is this acting in line with creator, brahma, or acting in line with creation. And it implies the um, correct use of sex energy or the right uh, use of sex energy. And in, for a particular period of development, um, really um, being celibate is, is considered a part of, of the, certainly the monastic tradition. Um, but they then learn how to use that energy and, and so one you know some basic things that i talk about um first of all um, um there it's it's not about sex energy being evil or bad or that um that there's this you know innate foulness like too often people in the west have really negative experiences of their own body or their own sexuality and so we don't want it's you know we need to be careful and that's you know can be mentioned in your class um, but there's, you know, often as Westerners, part of it is getting past body shame or, um, you know, the shame of, of what kind of creature are the what sign, what sign am I and feeling comfortable with how I was created. And so becoming comfortable with the unique and beautiful flower that I am. That's important. That's acting in line with creation. Not trying to fight it, not trying to, you know, subjugate it. Um, and it can be any way. Sometimes there are people who are not actually meant to be monastics who try to force themselves to be monastics, but actually what they really want is they really want to find a partner in life and to have a household. And they're just broken hearted because they got dumped or had a breakup. And so they run to spiritual life and, and yet they live this like dry, you know, bitter uh, spiritual life that's based on fear. And that no, that's not, you know, so often I see the SRF monastics counseling people to have the courage to get back into relationship life, to have the courage to get back into to society and to not hide behind meditation or hide behind spirituality because there's this deep embodied sadness that's palpable. Um, but brahmacharya, the definition, it's always important. You know, I, I like for you all to teach from the Sanskrit itself, and, and then you can fill in with some of your own personal learning that you've had. But it's always important to, to share. This has been my some of my personal learning around it, um, rather than thinking that that's the definition of, of what's said, right? And so it says, brahmacharya, brahmacharya, pratishtayam. Pratishtayam. Virya. Virya. Labaha. Labaha. And so it's a simple definition. It says, from the establishment in course, conduct, or action leading to Brahman or the creator, there is the attainment of vital energy. So when I establish myself in the actions with or in line with creation, then I obtain vital energy or you know, this virya, this deep, you know, virility is a kind of a cognate concept in English. Virya is courage. It's also power. Um, it's, and so one of the things that happens when people are in right relationship is there's this tremendous amount of energy to go forward. Um, when people are not in right relationship, then there's always this sort of second guessing or this confusion or fear. So for people that are um, 
for example, uh, um, you know, not in um, if they're you know predominantly in this, this sort of monogamous relationship, but they're not um, you know in line with that relationship, then there's going to be a tremendous amount of suffering. Um, and even within that, um, sex energy itself is this tremendous and powerful um, energy in the body. And so there are periods of time, um, certainly later in life, once a person's no longer, let's say, in their 30s and they're older than that, where reserving that energy for other use is uh, suggested as an important concept. Um, the brahmacharya stage in monastic life oftentimes is younger when people are teenagers, where in that the hormones are just bursting, bursting, bursting. And so it's a learning of how to, um, to use that. I think I lost you again. So just to finish this uh, class here, um, Brahmacharya has this traditional, um, certain, certainly a traditional stage, which is around celibacy and, and monastic um, life. But uh, more frequently, I just encourage students in, in the West, especially, um, to see sexuality as something that is sacred, to see it as something that is uh, to be expressed with self or other as something sacred. Um, and then that there are period of periods of time where it's useful to redirect that current and not to be in lust, not to be um, you know, indiscriminately just throwing the seed energy um, um, out there. And Ayurveda has some insight into this as well um, when Ayurveda talks about the process of tissue creation. Uh, so we go rasa rakta mamsa meda asti maja shukra artava and it takes five successive days uh, rasa is the plasma, the white blood, uh, the chyle. Rakta is the red blood, mamsa is the soft tissue. So by the time we get to soft tissue, it's 15 days. Meda is the fat or adipose tissue. Um, and as Hi, Shona. So I was just uh, correlating how brahmacharya is also um, the right uh, use of sex energy so even for people that are in sexual relationships, there's times for reserving that um, and for not becoming lustful and not giving in to uh, that as the only way of expressing love really between people or intimacy. Um, that uh, Ayurveda talks about the number of days it takes to create tissue. So there's rasa, rakta, mamsa, meda, asti, maja, shukra, artava, rasa is the plasma, the chyle formed immediately as we start to eat after five days, rakta, the red blood, which takes 10 full days to form. And mamsa, the soft tissue, meda, the adipose lining or the fat, uh, asti, the bone, maja, the nerve tissue, and then shukra artava, the sex tissue, which takes 35 days. So there's this long period of process of refinement and the distillment that, that occurs to create sex tissue. And so implied in that is that, you know, whatever I've been doing for the last 35 or 40 days is a contribution and toward that seed um, tissue that I'm making hmm. or the process around it. Does that include, I mean, that includes sperm for males and does it include the lubrication for females too? Yeah, so shukra is also the lubrication for, for a female. Artava r refers more towards the, the, um, the uterine lining and the process processes around the, uh, the shedding of the uterus. Um, so okay. it's uh, um, you know, similar number of days. Um, it's, it's not talking about the actual creation of the eggs themselves, but it does have to do with some, um, you know, of the processes around the eggs and how they're, um, you know, deployed or um, I'm, I'm honestly can't speak enough to, with enough intelligence to, to comment more on it. Um, but perhaps one of the female or, uh, um, Ayurveda, other Ayurveda doctors in, that you know of could help. But and my point is that Brahmacharya certainly is suggested, there's a usefulness in, implied here, 
by the Ayurveda talking about it taking 35 to 40 days just to discern and distill this tissue. Um, so, um, but more than that, um, there's a certain, certain um, uh, glow to people that have been able to transmute sex, sexual energy into a different kind of intimacy of a spiritual fragrance. Um, and and this, this incredible power um, is seen throughout different religious traditions where that the mystic process of transmuting sexual energy into the, the power to spiritually connect um, um, with others spreads the sense of, sense of intimacy like a, a sweet fragrance. Um, I've seen it in Catholic priests. I've seen it in um, practitioners of other religions. Um, however, it's important to mention that this does need training and that it's not about bottling up or suppressing sex energy, which then leads to abuse, sex, you know, sexual abuse and to abuse of power. So <clears throat> Brahmacharya is a, um, perhaps a, a very important one to talk about in the West, where we have, uh, you know, uh, sexuality used to sell just about everything. Um, and yet there's so little open um, and honest discussion around it. Um, sexuality creates huge political friction in our society um, where perhaps well-meaning um, Christian people who want some sense of morality around sexuality and want some sense of morality for their kids, which isn't a bad thing. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing to want kids to learn that sex has a lot of energy around it, a lot of power around it. But to end up like, you know, saying that homosexuality is evil and comes from Satan and whatever, you know, there's just a lot of distortion that happens that creates these political frictures and creates the, you know, damaging of, of families and damaging of communities. When it's, when there's a sense that, this is another way that in which yoga can be a unifying force, which is, you know, on the liberal left, too often people do live their lives with, with, uh, without enough discipline. And there's not enough like having joined some, you know, larger temple or church or guiding moral institution. There's a sort of a fierce independence. And oftentimes, you know, not to, you know, I risk, you know, seeming like a real jerk here, but there, there are times where there's addictive behavior, whether it's just too much alcohol, craft brews, wine, drinking, wine and yoga, beer and yoga, you know, smoking weed and yoga. Like there's just too, there's too often, a, you know, abusive substances and sex is one of them as well. There's not enough, you know, sticking out married life when it gets tough. There's not enough commitment to a partner. Um, there's a, you know, a, you know, sort of an ease easiness of, of just dismissing this relationship for an, another one. And so there is, there's importance, you know, but on the, on the other hand, too often conservative circles, there's, you know, this adherence to these rigid outer structures without understanding the inner meaning behind them. And so Brahmacharya, I think, is a useful thing to explore. In self, and in, as I teach, I think the important thing to teach Western students um, is that first and foremost, there should be this celebration of who I am as a unique flower. God created me uniquely the way I am. I have the attributes I have, they're unique gifts. There are also going to be unique challenges. And so for someone um, to fully embrace who I am, but then be willing to work on the things that keep me away from God. Um, and God being this ultimately inner experience of feeling connected to all that is and feeling in bliss and that is not lust and it's not the excitement or the rush of energy that comes with hormones and that's the important difference i think that brahmacharya is trying to state here mm -hmm. that that rush of energy that comes with hormones or with wanting to like you know kiss somebody or touch someone or you know stick to someone um, that is not the, the intimacy that is the, the spiritual life. I like, end, I like ending by always reminding people that I, I'm really not, if I can inspire people to learn Sanskrit and to study the text themselves, I don't really have anything that inspiring of my own, other than my own suffering to share with people. So, um, 
So I, I hope I can inspire you all to study Sanskrit and to study the texts on your own and to cultivate devotion and, and to feel God's presence. So thanks, Shona, for your help with what you're doing with all that. Yeah, thanks, Pierre. Take care. Have a beautiful day. I'm you sure too. you'll teach a wonderful class. Thank you. <laughs>